Hello everybody and uh, welcome to this brief, very, very brief review of uh, John Max. I would call it his bi biography of him, uh, written by Ralph Blumenthal. It's called The Believer, Alien Encounters, Hard Science, and the Passion of John, John Math Mack. Um, so again, it's written by Ralph Blumenthal and if you're familiar with my podcast, um, I, I'm a big fan of John Mack, but I wanted to do this kind of a special little uh, short, very short episode. I just recently, like two days ago, finished reading this book. And um, of course, you know, I like any, anything related to Dr. Mack, uh, I, I, I want to read. But this book did come out, I believe it came out a few years ago. Um, but it's just recently actually came out on, as an audiobook. So I did read it as an audiobook. But what interest, interested me the most, I think, was the fact that Ralph Blumenthal wrote it. Uh, he's a, um, a writer for the New York Times, and he's kind of connected to the whole uh, Leslie Keen and, um, you know, expose of the UFO phenomena in the New York Times, that article, I think, that came out in 2016, now six years ago. And um, he wrote this book, and... I, I don't I don't want to talk about it in, in length in the sense that uh, give you a whole book review, but I wanted to just give you some, I guess, off the cuff, quick reactions to the book, and also what I think about it in terms of its some of the claims made in the book, the the validity of the book. So the the book again, the main title is the Believer, but kind of a subtitle I would say is Alien Encounters, Hard Science. And the passion of John Mack. So, of course, you know the book does go into in length um, as to John Mack's passion with regards to and how how he actually discovered the whole concept, the whole phenomena of alien abduction, right? So, John Mack is if you're watching this video or hearing this episode, chances are you know about John Mack. You might have re you might have Googled him um, at some point, and now you're on YouTube. Uh, looking up his name, and maybe you found this video. So you're familiar with, obviously, very well known in the paranormal fields as being somebody who was a legitimate scientist, a psychiatrist, Harvard-trained psychiatrist, and um, who got involved in studying the phenomena of alien abduction, uh, wrote a very, very good book called Abduction itself. Uh, there, are, there are some follow-up books as well, Passport to the Cosmos, one of them. Uh, and he himself became kind of ostracized by the scientific community. Uh, Harvard investigated him. Uh, he obviously um, wasn't... Th the fact that he was studying a phenomena as esoteric as alien abduction did not go well with his superiors. And because of that, you know, as I mentioned, Harvard did do an investigation. He was kind of ostracized and shunned upon in the mainstream science community. And ironically, and um, I would say bit in a bittersweet way, in a very, uh, trying to find the word, but it, you would think that such a person as Dr. Mack would have maybe had a great life and obviously like a, uh, a climactic death. But he kind of had an anticlimactic, I guess that's the word, an anticlimactic death. And he died... Basically, at a, I wouldn't say a hit and run, but he, he was hit by a drunk driver uh, while giving, dur during one of his talks that he went to England to give in London, uh, after the talk, he was going for a walk and uh, crossing the street, drunk driver hit him and uh, he died in the hospital afterwards. And the book, The Believer, goes into quite a detail as to that particular incident. So the book itself, it it's called Alien Encounters for those reasons that I mentioned. And then hard science, because it does go quite a bit into his his actual um, work itself. He he wasn't he was a child psychiatrist. Uh, his focus was on the psych psychology of children, and um, he he won a Pulitzer Prize actually uh, for a study he did on the um, a biographical study again of, of the British officer T. E. Lawrence, and uh, the book was called A Prince of Our Disorder. So he did win the Nobel, the I'm sorry, not the Nobel, the Pulitzer Prize for Biography in 1977. And again, John Mack was born in New York, New York City, 
And he's he's really a East Coast guy, you know. In the, in the book that Ralph Blumenthal wrote, he goes quite into quite into detail about um, his ancestors. He, you know, being being a staunch uh, New England type of person, uh, he's obviously familiar with Harvard. He grew up in New York City, and he also had a lot of family that lived in kind of an idyllic Vermont. Uh, so he 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 kind of reminded me of John Irving in a sense. If you remember, if you know who John Irving is, very very famous author, author of A Prayer for Owen Meany, uh, uh, World According to Garp. Uh, I just recently finished reading A Widow for One Year, and um, Irving is is he himself is a New England total total New England guy. And he kind of reminded me a little bit of John Mack in the sense that he had very, very entrenched roots in that history. And John Mack himself, he came from a family who he him, he himself says, um, according to the author, that was not very religious, that they were very objective and believed in science first. And it was so John was re- not really allowed to to speculate too much as to belief beliefs in God, beliefs in other realities, and. He also, in the book, it, uh, the book talks about that John had a very, very close relationship to his mom, who he lost at a very young age, and that I guess John Mack, throughout his life, had this com- this, had this complex, not an edible complex, but kind of, kind of always trying to make peace with the fact that he lost his mom at such a young age, and um, and basically his whole life. That's 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 what John Mack. He himself told his wife, and we'll get into that in a second, but would tell his wife that, you know, throughout his whole life, he's always trying to make up for the loss of his mom. So that was one of the reasons why he probably got into psychiatry to kind of understand himself and try to help those that probably had the same situations as he did as a child. Losing his mom as a child was very traumatic. So hence, you know, he became a kind of a child psychiatrist. And speaking again of the third part of the subtitle, The Passion of John Mack, this is where the book gets very, very personal, in my opinion. Um, the passion of John Mack, not necessarily the passion for the study of alien abduction, not necessarily the passion for uh, psychiatry or for science in general, or even for activism, because the book does go into quite detail that he actually knew Carl Sagan, you know, the very famous astrophysicist Carl Sagan, and um he was very well well acquainted with a lot of the active activist movements of his time, uh, particularly again kind of protesting the election of George Bush the uh, second, George W. Bush, and uh, interesting anecdote in the book it does say that Dr. Mack was very very reticent in uh, criticizing anybody. He didn't like to criticize anybody except when it came to politics. He was definitely a staunch staunch um, antagonist of the uh, Republican Party of uh, George W. Bush. But Dr. Mack, the passion of Dr. Mack, what does that refer to? Well, Ralph Blumenthal doesn't necessarily specifically say that, but you can you can you could read it based on the on the book that uh, it, ha- it had to do with his passion for women. And he obviously was married, as I mentioned, um, he he got married with uh, a, an individual named Sally Stahl, or Mac, Sally Stahl Mac. And he had three children, Daniel, Kenneth, and Tony. But afterwards, um, you could tell that he was becoming, I wouldn't say bored in his marriage, uh, but again, he attributes it to the fact that he had this, uh, these issues, uh, these emotional issues, uh, mental issues with the loss of his mom, that he was becoming in his marriage, uh, I guess he needed some additional stimuli that he needed to be. He need, he wanted to be with somebody who had similar uh, likings that that liked to research similar things. He felt I, I'm not sure what Sally did, but I I don't think he goes into the, that in the book. But um, he didn't really have that with Sally, so he began to look. You know, would would maybe go to conferences and would meet other women. And he had connections with a lot of women. Some of these women actually uh, were were from um, Europe. He uh, had a connection with people that were involved in the UFO 
community. Um, in uh, one particular person was like a was a medium that he I think he went to Brazil with, and there's an anecdote in the book that he had like uh, I guess a psychedelic experience. So that's that's another thing that book goes quite a, quite a bit into that he did. Uh, not o- was he not only studied, you know, these phenomena of alien abduction and and how these individuals go into this phenomena and experience this phenomena and become and it, the phenomena itself becomes transformative in their lives, similar to a, a transformation due to, you know, trying a, a psychedelic substance. And um, he himself partook in a lot of these psychedelic substances as a, in, in first person. So the book does say he tried mescaline, tried uh, something something akin to LSD, and um, and he, I think he he even tried uh, he did a lot of breathing exercises. Um, he was involved in in some groups that I guess you know what they would do is basically they would get together and smoke weed and uh, do. You do, you know, these types of psychedelic drugs. And I believe his wife didn't want to join him, Sally. So that that part of the story, you know, initially, not, not again that it, it changed my mind about John Mack's work, but hearing this part about him, you know, it kind of didn't, didn't bring him down a level for me, but it obviously made him a little more human, um, his humanity. But obviously, we know we know about his work with the alien abduction community, and we know about, uh, of course, if you've seen my very one of my very first episodes of the Paranormal Nothing podcast, I talk about the very very famous aerial school phenomena case, and he was firsthand involved in interviewing all these children. But after hearing reading this book, you know, he's obviously was a very very complex individual who did end up getting a divorce from his wife, and as I mentioned. Um, was kind of in the middle, like in the in the in the middle between the scientific community, the mainstream, and the paranormal community. And ultimately, he didn't, you know, he it came to a point where he didn't care. You know, he didn't care who he offended, or he didn't care what people thought about him. Um, he wanted to do what his gut told him to do, was was just which was study the abduction phenomena. And just because of the fact of According to the book, uh, Dr. Mack's main reason why he studied this phenomena as a legitimate phenomena is because it ex- it ex- not it exuded, but that it showed um, the effects of the phenomena uh, were in- were physical. In other words, that people that allegedly were abducted by aliens or that went through an alien abduction uh, pheno- um, experience showed effects of it being a legitimately physical, real phenomena. So it wasn't entirely psychi- psych- psychic, psychiatrical. Uh, it wasn't entirely mental. It wasn't a spiritual phenomena. It showed the signs and the symptoms of it being a legitimate experience, real experience. That, I guess those are the words I'm trying to find. That it was a legitimate, real experience. So because he he kind of applied a framework, a paradigm, a structure to it, and based on other experiences that people tend to have, such as uh, mental illness or real experiences, he determined that it was it must it must be a real experience due to its effects and due to the um, experience of the individual as it exper- as he or she experienced the phenomena, and also due to the transformational aspects. And I guess that's the main part of the book. Um, Doctor Mack himself transformed. His 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 mentality about the phenomena itself also transformed. He initially, again, did not believe it. He was entirely an objective scientist until he met Bud Hopkins, again through an acquaintance. And Bud Hopkins, of course, we know from uh, he he's kind of the godfather, not the godfather, but one of the first legitimate people to study the phenomena. But he himself was an artist, and he kind of has a connection to Leslie Keen. So Leslie Keen and, and Bud Hopkins were. Uh, I believe they were a couple at some point. And uh, Leslie Keene is mentioned in the book as being somebody who was in attendance at some of these conferences where Dr. Mack and Bud Hopkins were. And uh, he also talks a little bit about, Blumenthal does, about uh, Hopkins and Mack's relationship and that it um, it wasn't always, you know, peachy clean. In other words, they, they, they did have a kind of a fallout. Uh, Bud Hopkins thought the phenomena was one thing. And uh, John Mack thought it was something else. 
until later on in their lives, I guess, they met up at an, at some particular UFO conference. And um, like he mentions that they were kind of in the swimming pool and they were swimming and uh, they began to chat it up and uh, they kind of got over their differences. So overall, again, going back to the transformational aspect, uh, this book mentions again that that's what interested uh, Dr. Mack the most. And he actually does talk a little bit about that in the book Abduction, uh, one of his best books, which is kind of a, a whole study of all of a, of various individuals and their experiences. And one of these individuals in that book is a person named Scott. And Scott actually ends up being Randy Nick Nickerson, Randall Nickerson. And Randall Nickerson is mentioned in this book. And if, uh, you look up his name, Randall Nickerson. He's actually one of the individuals, or the individual, who's in the process of trying to release a documentary that he wrote or that he directed um, about the grown tr the adults. Now they're now adults. These the kids that experienced the um, aerial abduction phenomena at, at the uh, the aerial school, the Rua Zimbabwe. Uh, these individuals are now old, older adults. Excuse me, and. Um, Randall Nickerson was one of the uh, abduct abductees that Dr. Mack worked with that is kind of profiled in this book, Abduction. Now, Randall Nickerson is actually making this movie about the case, um, the, the adult perspective of this aerial school phenomena case that happened in 1994 in Arua, Zimbabwe. Um, so it, it is interesting, that connection. And the book itself, as I mentioned, it's very... It's very, it's kind of a, not that I feel kind of uh, peering into Dr. Mack's life a little too much, but I, I did, I had heard that um, Ralph Blumenthal was given access to some of the family files, photos, anecdotes, biographies, journals of the, of Dr. Mack. So Ralph Blumenthal did have access to quite a bit private, quite a bit of private information um, that John Mack's family had on him. Uh, including in the John Mack Institute. So reading his book, you know, you kind of really see a whole picture of the human that w tried really hard to to maintain his composure in, in the scientific community as a legitimate objective scientist, but he could not get away from the fact that his, his uh, I guess his mental paradigm, his, his analytical mind did not let him just kind of sweep under the rug the whole phenomena of alien abduction after again he had he he was introduced to this topic by jo, by a Bud Hopkins so he couldn't get away with from it because it just could not be uh categorized as being another mental disorder according to him and that kind of led him down the slippery slope into you know going full blown into the abduction phenomena but then again based on that he began to see that there were other ways of experiencing transfor transformation, reality. He got into, got into uh, again, hall hallucinogenic drugs. He had quite a few affairs and uh, ultimately died a kind of an anticlimactic death. I think what really kind of, you know, as the story progressed, as I was reading or slash hearing this book, um, little by little I began to kind of, not that I got bored, but, you know, I kind of already knew the story. But at the very end of the story, probably the last 30 minutes uh, of this audiobook, it goes into detail about what happened after John Mack died. This is where it gets a little very on the paranormal side, because it talks about individuals like Barbara Lamb. I actually got to see her speak one time. and She's kind of a, a very famous in the mediumship, uh, paranormal, alien abduction uh, hip, hypnotherapy community as being somebody who does that. I don't know about that. I, I don't want to even speculate because I think all of that is really a uh, portal to the demonic. That's my opinion. But according to the book, um, John Mack, I guess, after he died, some things started, uh, he started appearing to some friends of his as kind of a, uh, you know, again, post-death uh, apparition telling them that what he thought of what they thought the phenomena is is not really the case. So I guess that's what he told some some individuals like Barbara Lamb. 
And I guess some individuals that were working on a book about consciousness, so that's another aspect is that I guess near the end of his life, he not only began to study uh, alien abduction, but he was also very interested in consciousness, which I find interesting because uh, there are individuals, researchers now, um, UFO researchers that have kind of left the nuts and bolts explanation for UFOs and are now getting into more, I would I would say, um, esoteric, paranormal explanations for UFOs such as consciousness. So Grant Cameron is one that comes to mind where if you're familiar with the UFO community, you know that Grant Cameron was very much into nuts and bolts. He had this whole series <clears throat> of talks that he would give about presidents and the UFOs. And uh, he knew, I mean, this guy speaks 100 miles an hour, and he knew like every date and uh, name and location where allegedly some presidents got to see the UFO um, wreckage, the uh, UFO materials, uh, trace evidence, all of that. He knew all the names. But then uh, over the last few years, he's actually changed his whole mentality because he had apparently some kind of consciousness download where he had this data download happen into his consciousness that he kind of saw all of a sudden that the UFO phenomena is not real in the sense of nuts and bolts and flesh and blood, but it, it has to do with consciousness. And um, and now recently, I, I also started hearing, after I was finished with The Believer, um, now I'm reading Leslie Keen's second book. So we know her first book, very famous, The UFOs, Pilots and Generals Go on Record. One of the best books, probably the best book on the on the phenomena that I've read. But now her second book is a, is another book called Surviving Death. And it has to do with uh, NDEs, right? Near-death experiences and what happens after you die. And she goes quite a bit into, um, got into some esoteric stuff. But I just started hearing it, her audiobook again. And she's talking about consciousness. You know, can we prove that consciousness survives death? So John Mack also, again, near the end of his life in his studies in his later years, this is one thing he was getting into is the origin of consciousness and what happens to consciousness after we die. So it's interesting, again, at the end of this book, uh, some of the individuals that were acquainted with John Mack, I guess, had some kind of apparition and felt his presence and I guess even in one case, one of the individuals says that John Mack spoke to them and and told them, again, this is John Mack after death, um, about some lo a location where he had his notes, I guess, on the topic of of NDEs, of near-death experiences and consciousness that he was he was working on for a book with, with another co-writer. And uh, this person, I guess, John Mack told this person where his notes were. And uh, I guess this person found them and then I guess is still writing the book. But the most telling part, and I had heard this before, is that John Mack, I guess, told Barbara Lamb that the, and appeared to her, I guess here near me in San Diego, that's where he appeared to her while she was uh, having a nap in the house of her daughter uh, here near San Diego. She was outside taking a nap outside in the, in the garden. And um, she felt the presence of John Mack, apparently, and uh, John Mack told her that that the phenomena, meaning the alien abduction phenomena or the alien phenomena, is not what they thought it was. That's Those are the words he said. Now, he didn't go on to say, well, it's not what we thought it was. It's this instead. That was not said. Now, I, I am hesitant to believe any of that because, again, I, I kind of, I, I'm familiar with this lady's tale because... She goes into detail that I guess her and John Mack were going to write a book on reptilians and that I guess I've I've heard that she tells a story that a reptilian appeared to her in her house. Uh, you know, very, very high strangeness, I would call it. And there is no proof. There's, I mean, where is the proof? So I don't want to believe everything, but interesting story, nevertheless, entertaining at the end. But more, more than anything, this book, I think, struck me as being a biography of the person of John Mack, very, very complex person who had a lot of different things, I guess, feelings and interests and um, passions, I would say, all within him, 
kind of a fi- fighting for attention, I would say. And ultimately, you know, at the end, uh, you could tell he was kind of a, I, I could tell just by hearing this this author talk about John Mack, he was kind of a lonely person at the end because he was kind of jumping from topic to topic and um, one subject he's studying, one time he's studying this, the next day he was studying something else. And uh, it seemed like he was trying to find somebody that shared his interests and that could actually uh, converse with him, dialogue with him about those interests. And he didn't have that. Um, so again, I, I hope, hopefully if you do want to read the book, I, I recommend it. It is, it is, it was pretty good. It took me, uh, I guess a couple of weeks to go through it. Um, but it is a telling book on, on the, the person, the human John Mack, not just again on his work of alien abduction, but on what led him to study that and what happened after he studied it. And, uh, Almost a, a tale of uh, a warning, I would say, especially in the times we live in, definitely now. So hope hope you enjoyed this. Uh, I guess I tried I tried to make it brief, but it ended up being a little bit, almost close to 30 minutes. Uh, brief reaction to the book, The Believer, Alien Encounters, uh, Hard Science, and The Passion of John Mack, written by Ralph Blumenthal. And again, it came out a couple of years ago, but I'm just getting to read it. Hopefully I'll do another episode like this since I'm reading again Leslie Keen's um, Surviving Death. So that'll be interesting because I tend not to read that kind of stuff. But again, it's Leslie Keen. So I really, I, I'm looking forward to hearing her objective take and her very, very analytical take uh, on the phenomena that we know as uh, near-death experiences and uh, survival of consciousness. So hope everybody is staying safe. And as always, question everything.